Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the Orlando Magic HQ podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic HQ podcast brought to you by the Belly of Sports Podcast Network. We're your hosts, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, June 16th, and we are less than one week away from the 2023 NBA Draft. The NBA Finals is officially over. The Denver Nuggets are your NBA champions, which is awesome because, um, you know, the the great thing about it is that the Denver Nuggets, they're not a, you know, the the most popular market. The Denver Nuggets is the first time they win the NBA Finals you know, in their franchise. So really kudos to them. Um, Former Magic Man, Aaron Gordon, former Magic Man, Ish Smith, former Magic Man, Jeff Green. Um, Man, a a lot of things to be excited for from for them and that team. But who cares about them, man? I I don't want to spend too much time talking about the Nuggets. I want to talk about us. Um, And really today really felt like We're recording this on Thursday night. You guys are listening to it on Friday morning, but it felt like today the rumor mill was running and boy, was it running loud and wild Um, from us hearing about all the things in regards to Bradley Beal and Zion Williamson and kind of where the magic, um, you know, what what's really up to date with them? Because you have some media outlets that are kind of calling the Orlando Magic a black box where there's really not a whole lot of insight going on. But then you have Bleacher Report, you know, kind of saying otherwise. They're 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 saying that uh maybe the magic might be putting some players on the trading block. Maybe the magic might be looking at this player and that player. And we're gonna break that all down in today's episode. But before we do um, get into that. I want to ask you today, or excuse me, yesterday they released the new logo for the 35th anniversary logo. I'm not sure, Al, if you really got a chance to really dissect it, um, but I want to get your initial thoughts on it. This is something that the Orlando Magic, they kind of released like a, a kind of a teaser letting us know that there is going to be a logo change. Um, there's been a lot of talks about the Magic really wanting to wear the fan base, really wanting to see the pinstripes come back and You know, from Nike contracts, we weren't really able to see what that would look like until the 35th annual year, which is this season coming up. So we're hoping that we're going to see more of the old school feel magic. So let me get your thoughts on the new logo before we jump into the rumor mill and and the draft. Yeah, so I think that the cool thing is, as you guys know, any anniversary year, we actually get to go back to a throwback jersey. We actually get to go back to some classic chords. So the big hope is that this means that we'll go back to our maybe 90s look some way, somehow. Um, a lot of people want to see the, the classic pinstripes. By that, I mean like the Penny and the Shacks. So more to come on that. We know that that's coming later on in the year. But for now, the logo, kind of a, kind of a teaser, right? So we know it has like the old um, logo basketball. It's not the new Magic basketball that's in the logo. Um, so that was kind of exciting. That may be a hint of what's to come uh, here in the upcoming months. I mean, I liked it. It's simple. It's classic. It's, it's, it's fresh. It feels new at the same time. Um, it's just exciting that we're already talking about, like, you know, the next season. It's getting real. We know we have the draft coming up, but we're talking about new logos, perhaps. We're talking about uh, new jerseys coming up. So that usually follows the draft free agency. So we're getting closer to that. But in my opinion, for what I expected, it's, it's fresh. It's clean. I like it. What about you? Yeah, the Orlando Magic said in a statement that fans can also look forward to some additional surprises and throwback favorites throughout the season to be announced soon. So there's definitely some things in the work on an old school feel. If there's one thing that, you know, people should, um, you know, be excited about is the fact that, you know, they still decided to kind of incorporate the old school logo in there. So, you know, again, that's that's a teaser of, of what's to come. Um, even from, you know, the the assistant coaches throughout the whole past season, some of the wardrobe that they were wearing, a lot of it had uh, to do with the old school logo, man. And and there's not anyone that will complain um, in seeing that logo a lot more, man. It's, it's traditional. It's classic. It's a throwback. Um, and quite frankly, it's it's a staple. When you think about the 90s, 
you know, it's it's hard to to be from Orlando and not think of that logo as as being a big part of that era. And in my opinion, when it comes to different logos in the NBA, you know, you got the Chicago Bulls, the Boston Celtics, even the Lakers, man, there there's logos out there that are too um too old school to change. They're too iconic to change. And I feel like the Orlando Magic were we're up there, man. Our our old school logo in my opinion, shouldn't have ever changed. And even though we did, you know, there's a, a glimmer of hope that somehow we still find a way to honor, you know, the the past. And this is this is kind of the the first step forward, man. And and I think it's a good direction. I think so too. I think it's gonna be just a matter of now waiting for what's next. It's gonna be exciting to see the jerseys, which that should be the next one that gets announced. Um, and then of course, as the season gets closer, we'll get to see the courts as well. Um, but don't forget, we also have the city edition. We also have perhaps any, any new jerseys that we may introduce this year. So there's a lot of things coming here over the next few months. Once we settle the off season, um, the cool thing is, again, as you said before in this podcast, the NBA does not stop. It's like, it's the off season right now, but here we are talking about the lottery, the draft, free agency, then comes summer league, then the logos and the jerseys. So it's it, again, it keeps us busy. Uh, I'm glad we it does because again, we have a new episode to drop every week and it keeps content coming. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll we'll see what ends up happening. Just the thought of being able to see, you know, Paulo Bancaro and, and Franz Wagner wearing the old school pinstripes is gonna be really, really exciting. Um, you know, whoever it is that we decide to draft in this draft, you know, being able to see the the new era still wearing some of the old school stuff is gonna be really cool. Um, so a lot of things to be excited for, and that's just one element of it. Now, something I did want to touch base on before we start talking about the draft and some of the rumors that we heard, um, Shaquille O'Neal just recently did a freestyle at a Home Depot, uh, where we're calling it the Home Depot freestyle. And, um, I I wanted to read a bar that he, he put in this freestyle where he kind of name dropped the Orlando magic, um, and then kind of get your thoughts on, you know, the the after effects of that. So pretty much he says, if you count my points and rebounds, quadruple platinum, got two retired jerseys in two different cities. I'm still waiting on that call from the Orlando Magic, pretty much insinuating my jersey's retired in L.A., it's retired in Miami. You know, trying to go for that third, that third city to retire my jersey. The team that drafted him has not you know, put his jersey in the rafters. And the the question that comes to mind that was a little stirred up is, you know, should the Orlando Magic make that call? Should we retire Shaquille O'Neal's jersey? And, and it created a little bit of a buzz. So I'm I, I want your uh, I want your feedback, man. Should the Orlando Magic really look into, you know, retiring a player like Shaquille O'Neal, um, retiring his jersey and putting it in the rafters and and you know solidifying his legacy in Orlando. Well, I mean, he's in the Magic Hall of Fame already, right? Which is what we do. That's our version of retiring a jersey. So he's already gotten that. Um, But I I may have a hot take here, which is those teams that retire his jersey, he won a ring with those teams. He was there long enough to get a ring with those teams. Unfortunately, Orlando, for whatever reason, and you want to blame the front office, you want to blame the city, you want to blame Shaq himself, he left before he could accomplish that in Orlando. So... I get it. It's a huge debate. Shaq, Dwight, who deserves it first? If we were to ever introduce retiring jerseys, my hot take would be Dwight deserves it first. I know Shaq got us on the map, but Dwight kind of established us. He he was here longer. He got us to the same place, the NBA Finals. Um, unfortunately, both both of them left the same way, which was kind of in a, in a bitter way, leaving us to go to the Lakers. Um, but if you ask me, I think Dwight deserves it more. Um, but for the time being, we don't do jersey retirements. We do Hall of Fame indictments, and he's already there. So I don't know what else he wants from us at this point. Yeah, see, I and we've had this conversation before, and we talked about it on the podcast. I, I do believe that, you know, uh, jersey retirement is is a missing element for our, um, our, our culture, our history. I, I think that mm-hmm. it's something that should be celebrated. And I, I like the fact that we do have our, you know, Hall, Hall of Fame, Magic Hall of Fame. I think it allows us to be able to honor more people than, you know, just who we would, you know, have their jerseys retired. So it allows us to honor, you know, Nick Anderson's, the Dennis Scott's, the, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, in my opinion, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't retire Shaq's jersey. It's 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 
I wish more would have been accomplished. I wish that it didn't end the way that it ended. Um, quite frankly, uh, the the main reason why I wouldn't want to is because I kind of feel like it's it's a uh, it's backwash, man. It's when you think of Shaquille O'Neal, you you don't think of Orlando Magic right away. You think about the Lakers, and then maybe we maybe after the Lakers, maybe we think about the Magic, maybe. But again, he's accomplished more with the Miami Heat. You know, the Lakers they built him a statue. You know, so why, why, why would we do that? Why? We can't even claim him as, as ours the way, you know, we would be able to claim a player like um, Penny Hardaway, Tracy McGrady. Mm-hmm. Like, even though Tracy McGrady was drafted by the Raptors, when people think of T-Mac, is, we can Magic. put an argument that people think of the Orlando Magic. Mm-hmm. That's why I think that if we did retire a jersey, the jersey that we should retire is number one. And granted, I am super biased. T-Mac is my guy. I will fight that battle with anyone, but <clears throat> I think that there's there's certain numbers in the NBA that you think about and you automatically think about a specific team, right? Um, you know, you think about the number three and you automatically would think of crediting Allen Iverson. You think about 23 yep. and you'll credit, um, you know, Michael Jordan and the, Chica- and the Chicago Bulls. When you think of one, you know, you're thinking about the Orlando Magic. You're thinking about Penny. You're thinking about T-Mac. And I feel like Penny and T-Mac were generational players that inspired generational talents that still play in the NBA today. Your Jalen Browns, your Jason Tatums, you know, LeBron James, his favorite player growing up was Penny Hardaway. So, you know, you you have these things that, you know, they they've been such a big part and still are a big part of today's NBA that I think that you know, we, we should have pride in that. And the number one should be retired. It still, to me, feels weird seeing, you know, other players on our roster wearing number one. I won't be offended if someone wanted to wear 32. It wouldn't impact me the same way. But number one feels weird. Jonathan Isaac still wearing one is still a little awkward to me. I was going to say that that's disrespectful, man. I think you you got to throw Jonathan Isaac's name in there, too. You got to talk about T-Mac and Penny. And Isaac, too. I'm, I'm D- messing with you. I'm D- messing with you. Doug <laughs> Christie, Vaughn Wafer. Uh, you know, respect, <laughs> respect to my man, skip to my Lou, because I I loved his time with the Magic, <clears throat> and these are these are guys that just, in my opinion, you know, they, it's just it's just they they shouldn't they shouldn't have been able to wear number one at the very least. At the very least, if you're not retiring it, then kind of make it like an unwritten rule, like all right, number one isn't retired, but mm, sorry, you can't wear it. You know, at least something, anything, and that just hasn't has happened. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree I, with you. I, I they, will, got, they got to figure something out. Yeah, I will say that um, it, it kind of it kind of makes me uh, chuckle a little bit that bothers Shaquille O'Neal that much. Like, it's the one thing that kind of irks him a bit. Like, damn, I can't believe these dudes still haven't retired my jersey. They also won't let him buy the team, so go figure. Oh, like, yeah. it's, <laughs> nor should they. Nor should they. I feel like part of part of that whole aspect of him wanting to buy the team is pettiness. Like, the first thing that that dude would do when he buys a team is retire his own jersey, which to me is it's it's weird. One hundred percent, super weird. But uh, man, definitely let us know in the comments, man, of of what you guys feel, what you guys think, um, in regards to it. But I, I think it's dope that he at least said it. I think it was dope when I heard when I heard the song. I, I thought it was uh, that was clever. I thought it was cool. You know, cause, yeah. Because the way he did it, it was it's not like he was talking smack about the magic. He was like, yo, I'm still waiting on that call from the magic, man. Just give me a call. Let me know it's, you know, it's time. It's time. <clears throat> but definitely, definitely a cool moment. All right. So let's talk about some of the, the rumors that we've been hearing. So <clears throat> the number one thing, uh, first and foremost, I think we have to address is the whole Fred Van Vliet. So officially, you know, he declined his player option with the Toronto Raptors, making him an unrestricted free agent. And again, on and on and on, we continue to see his name linked to the Orlando Magic. I don't want to harp on this topic too long because I feel like we've been kind of beating a dead horse. But just to kind of get our final uh, thoughts on it, yes or no on Fred Van Vliet, have you changed your mind on, you know, bringing a championship caliber point guard veteran to the Magic um, in Fred? Um, no, I have not changed my mind. I think that again, if you're going to spend that kind of money on someone or some way, somehow commit that kind of money to someone, whether it's via trade or free agency, there are better options out there. So if you ask me, 
I wouldn't commit, you know, 29, 30, 35 million dollars to Fred Van Fleet. I just don't think it's the right move at this time for this team. Um, now, if the front office made the decision and, you know, we don't want to, but that's what they do, I- I'll support them. It is what it is. It's not my favorite move. But um, if you ask me, that is not the best way for us to use our resources in a guy like him. That's my final decision on this. What about you? Yeah. So um, shout out to our Patreon, Mike M, who, who you know, brought this to my attention because it completely has slipped my mind. Um, the fact that Nick Nurse now is in Philly and there's a strong possibility that James Harden will not stay in Philly. Um, they're going to be targeting Fred Van Vliet. And to me, it almost makes too much sense for him to sign with Philly. So and that kind of give me like a like a glimmer of hope that we won't even entertain the idea just because it just makes way more sense for someone like Fred Van Vliet in his career <clears throat> to kind of continue with his his former coach and trying to, you know, compete for a championship. He already had that experience, wants to do it again. You have an opportunity to be able to play with Joel Embiid. It makes a whole lot of sense. So for for these media outlets that continue to <clears throat> kind of chip at the same tree um, and connecting Fred Van Vliet with the Magic, uh, I think it's time to stop it, man. It's just weird. I don't know what it is where everyone's fascination with uh, the Orlando Magic and and throwing point guards at us. Like I, I, think, what we're, it is. I think we're okay. It's the fact that they think of Markel still as, as this bust, this guy that it's not a starting point guard in this league. They think of Cole Anthony as someone who is a backup point guard, and that's all he is. Mad so that's 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 the that's perspective they have, right? It's like, oh, they need a point guard, but they haven't watched us the last two years. They haven't seen what Markel did last year. So that's why that keeps coming back, and, and they keep saying that's the guy that they should go after. They have money. But again, to your point, uh, Philly makes sense. I just It all depends on Harden, what he decides to do. Um, they also have Maxi, who I don't know how he would fit in next to Van Fleet, kind of both point guards that are kind of short. Um, but wouldn't be the first time me. he he's had the experience with Kyle Lowry in True. Toronto. So True. You know, they'll, they'll find a way to make it work. And you're, you're going to do it with a coach that has already done it, you know, in Canada. So you know, True. <laughs> him being able to bring that there, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out, but Man, it's, it's, it's a constant communication of magic, point guard, magic, point guard, magic, point guard. Guys, relax. Like, relax. Like, we've seen – and here, <clears throat> here's here's the thing, man, is that we've we've seen the the growth. Like, I, I get people's concerns, right, uh, from Markel Foltz not being fully healthy. Um, outside of the toe situation, which was effing, you know, preventable. Like, the dude's just walking around his house and he stubbed his toe, like – you know, this it's not like he got injured on the court. Like this, this is someone that literally it was it was a we'll call it a freak accident. It's not something common that's that's going to happen. You know, he did a good job staying healthy last season. Once he was finally able to get onto the court, it took him a little while to get you know his rhythm in. But the more he played, the better he got, and the better the team got. Damn near put us over his shoulders and and you know pulled us into the NBA playoffs. Um, you know, we 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 feel confident enough to say that, you know, if if we had a point guard in the beginning of the season, the Magic would have been in that playing tournament. We would have been playing, you know, additional meaningful basketball. Now, with that being said, um, you know, we we've always talked about the Magic need a star and should the Magic trade for a star and who's available out there. Uh, there's there's been debates on whether or not the Magic should have went after Donovan Mitchell last season. Um, if we're being honest, if the Magic really wanted to go out and get a star caliber player, there's a lot of picking to choose from this offseason. There's been reports coming out that Bradley Beal will be working with the Washington Wizards on a potential trade. Um, uh, whether or not he would sign off because he has a no trade clause on trading being traded to the Magic is another story. But you have players like Bradley Beal. You have players like um, we heard reports from Zach Levine also maybe on the trading block as well. Um, so my question to you is, should the Magic get involved? Should we be in these talks? Um, the Magic have an opportunity right now. And, and this is a part that's a little scary because it does remind me of the Rob Hennigan, Serge Ibaka, uh, Victor Oladipo scenario where there was a lot of pressure to win now and to make it into the playoffs um, to where it it wasn't a mistake was made, a transactional mistake was made that kind of put us back a few years. 
Should the Magic go out and make a big move to bring an all-star to play alongside Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, or should the Magic continue to go on this trend of building within, developing, and now being able to be the only team in the NBA to have two picks in this upcoming lottery? I mean, that's been the, the big debate, right? It, what's changing now is, is that it's actually real now. Now Beal may actually be on the block. Um, Levine, we've been hearing rumors for a while now. He may be on the block, then nothing really happens. But now it seems like the Bulls are really shopping him again. It, it's tough. We all said last year after it happened, um, you know, maybe we should have been engaged in this whole Donovan Mitchell situation. Before it happened, a lot of no's, a lot of, hey, keep, keep building through the draft, keep doing what you're doing. So I feel like Magic fans have this thing where before we commit to someone or, or go after a player, we're like, no, 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 we're, we're doing things fine. But after the guy gets traded, they're like, man, we should have got involved. So you can't have it both ways. It's, it's one or the other. So my thing is, I, I'm okay with getting a guy like Levine. I, I don't know. I know the injury situation. But honestly, I trust him more than I do Beal. Like Beal to me is a guy that's making a ton of money also has not been healthy, has not impacted winning by any means um, with the Wizards, not even making the playoffs, with a decent team. Um, if there's a guy I would be okay making a call, is Levine. Now, it, it depends on what it would take. I'm not going to give you guys everything in the world for this guy. I may give you a guy maybe like Jalen Suggs, a salary filler, and maybe a pick or two. That's about it. If it's more expensive than that, you hang up the phone. Um, but you also have to realize at some point we have to consolidate. We have a lot of guys that, again, sucks in the backcourt right now. Sucks, Cole Anthony, Markel, Gary Harris, whoever we draft. It, it's going to be tough for us to have minutes for all these guys. So if the decision is we are ready, I think that Paolo Franz showed us enough for us to add a, a complementary piece that can really help scoring the ball, then make the move, make, make the calls, really get engaged in these conversations. But if you really don't think that we're there yet, that we need another year or a year and a half to really start making this more aggressive moves, I'm okay with that too. But whatever you do, to your point, Anthony, commit 100%. Don't do it halfway. Don't, don't, don't try to make these big moves, but then get scared halfway through. You got to decide. And I think our front office would do that. Um, but to answer your question, I don't think it's going to happen. I think that our front office is actively really trying to build the right way this time around, really do it through the draft, really do it through maybe a free agent signing, not so much like blow it up for one guy to try to make the playoffs. That's my opinion. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think that the the whole entire reason why we decided to go a different route and you know hire a president of basketball operations is to refrain from the meddling. Right, It's not like Alex Marins is going into Rob Hennigan's office and saying, we need to win now, we need to win now, we need to win now. You know, the, the very beginning uh, from Jeff Weltman, you know, one of the questions that was asked is, do you have full autonomy? Do you have full rights to make any decision that you want? And he said that, yeah, I wouldn't be accepting this position unless, unless it's, it's me, it's my final say. And I think that that's the, one of the biggest things that we can really stand on. When people talk about like past moves and and oh man, the the Magic front office has been terrible. Like people are referencing before, you know, uh, the Weltman era, and I think that you know that's that's one of the things that that makes me love this front office so much more is that no one's going to pressure them into doing something that they don't want to do. Um, when we when we talk about a player like Bradley Beal, um, there's nothing about him that excites me um, from. The things outside of what we know that he can bring. Is he a, is he a high caliber player? Yes. Is he a, a massive offensive weapon? Yes. The part that scares me is obviously his his contract. His contract is insane for, for what he is. You would think that he's the best player in the NBA with how much money he's getting paid. You know, he last mm -hmm. year was his first year of his multi-million dollar con like his contract is ridiculous he is set to make 46 million dollars this year the following year 50 million the year after that 53 million from 2026 to 2027 damn near almost 60 million my man's not going to be a free agent until 2027 now you think about all that money that you're spending on him and then we take a look at this past season he played 50 games the season before, he played 40 games, 2020 to 2021, 60, 57. You know, he hasn't 
the last time that he's missed less than 20 games was back in 2018 for an Orlando for an Orlando Magic team that damn near was this effing close on making it to the to the play in. It, sh- it it goes to show you that the Magic aren't a team to kind of you know hey do you rest a little bit you know don't worry about playing this game we'll we'll get you ready like we we can't we can't harbor our players for the postseason when we don't even know if we're going to make the postseason every game counts so we can't rely on spending all our money even though we have money to spend on one player that we can't rely on man it gives me grand hill vibes and i quite frankly i don't i don't like it i don't care if he's a florida guy you know i i I don't care if if you know he's he's a dire need for for our position he he would fit the shooting guard offensive weapon i don't care about any of that because the best ability, as you know, is availability. And if we're investing all that money on a nice, shiny Ferrari, and that Ferrari is going to stay in the garage and we can't drive it, I'm not into it. I'm not into it at all. Yeah. And, I mean, similar story with Levine, right? So Levine is making this upcoming season $40 million, 43 the one after, 45 to one after that, and then a final year of 48 million. Nope. Um, a guy that's injury prone, a guy that hasn't shown that he can stay healthy. I am so good. there's a reason why this guy's out on the market. And don't forget, we haven't really talked about this in depth. And maybe next week we will once we figure out the draft and, and talk about free agency. But the new CBA coming up, we, we can talk about that more in depth next week. I can do my research on it more. But there's some huge, huge repercussions into building a team going forward. Teams will not be able to do what the Warriors have been doing, what the Clippers have been doing, which is just simply pay penalties and just keep building the team that way. It's going to be really, really harmful to a team to just give out these massive contracts to random players just to try to compete. You got to be really smart going forward in the NBA. And that's going to lead to a lot of trades, a lot of a lot of key moves in free agency. And the Magic may benefit from that because they do have a lot of flexibility right now. So all that to say... You don't really want to commit, you know, $50 million to a guy that may not be healthy, that, yes, he can score the ball. But to your point, Anthony, he's not reliable. So I don't think this is the guys that Magic should go, be going after. There's a reason why the Wizards, the Bulls have these guys in the market. They're trying to get out those contracts. And I heard it today from Sack Lowe that Bradley Beal may command a matching salary and maybe one pick because that's how bad the Wizards may want to just simply get out of that contract. So it's not that we have to give up a lot. We may give up a guy like Gary Harris, maybe a few fillers in, in salary, and then a few picks. And that's good enough. But the, the point is, you're getting all that salary in. Does it make sense to commit all that money to this guy? So it's not really the cost to me. It's the future of this franchise, what that's going to impact, um, how it's going to impact our salary cap. So a lot to dissect. We can do more of that next week after the draft. But uh, definitely a lot of interesting things are going to be happening um, over the summer and a lot of rumors are going to be coming up too yeah for a team that struggle with injuries it doesn't make sense to to bring in more players that you already know have struggled with injuries simple as that i'm i'm good with bradley beal i'm good with zach levine i do not want any of these guys anywhere near my team uh, the magic were were good enough to almost make it to the promised land yes uh last season um and you know, and the reason a big factor of us not being able to is us dealing with injuries and not even talking about Jonathan Isaac. I'm talking about Markel Foltz, you know. So um, I, I think that hold off, continue what we're doing, build internally, develop our young guys. We got to hit the draft. You know, it's a big part of it. Like uh, we talked about it all last season. In order for us to be able to make it into the plan, a lot of things have to go right. There's a lot of different factors that have to go our way. And we we're almost there. So now is where we kind of buckle down and we see year two of Paolo. We see year three of Franz. We we start we start getting these things that work in our favor. Um, and I think that we're all right, that we don't need to pull that trigger just yet. Free agency is, I think, where we're gonna find, you know, the the most the most support in a way that we're not relying on the guys on our roster now. Um now Eric Pink is of Bleacher Report, um, you know, he he came down with his uh, draft guide um, for all the teams in the NBA and kind of talked about, you know, what teams are needing, who certain teams may target. And, you know, he had a lot to say about the Orlando Magic. And one player in particular, he 
targeted for the Orlando Magic that the Orlando Magic should keep their eye on is a player like Max Struess from the Miami Heat. So my question to you is, is this a player that interests you? He's said to be in, he's said to be a free agent who may command ten million dollars annually in free agency. Is this somebody who you would look at and say, hey, that might be a good fit for the Magic? Now, mind you, people are going to look at man. This dude was a nobody in the finals. He disappeared. But would you be willing to take that risk? I mean, one thing that he can do, and we as Magic fans know this really well, because he's killed us every time that he plays the Magic. Um, this guy can shoot the ball, right? So when you think about when he's scoring, we need a guy that can come in and just simply shoot the ball, be a threat from behind the arc, so that can open the floor for Franz and Paolo and Markel. He fits that. He fits that. He can definitely do that. Um, he is, what, 6'5", 27 years old, shot about 36% from the, from the three-point range last season. I wouldn't mind it. It just has to make sense, uh, financially speaking. I think there are better players, though. I think a guy like Gary Trent is a guy that I would prefer to have in the roster instead of him. So I would throw a little bit more money to Gary Trent instead of maybe signing a guy like Max, Max Truce. However, Gary Trent will want to start. Max may be okay coming off the bench. That, that will be a big factor there. So it... it I'll trust the front office. Like Once again, I'll go back to that. If they decide to go after him, it's because they explore other options and he was the best shooter that they could sign for the money. Um, I wouldn't mind him. I just don't think his role in the team will be impactful. He will be a threat off the bench. That's about it. Maybe like a Terrence Ross type, younger. Um, that's about it. Yeah, I think this is where we're going to be able to see exactly the direction that the Magic do want to go in this draft. Uh, because, again, if, if the Magic go out there and we sign a couple wings... You know, does it make sense? Now, if we go out there and we start drafting players who, you know, are not known for their shooting, imagine you're going to have to find that shooting somewhere via trade, via free agency. As simple as that. So if you're not looking at MX, then we'll bring up Austin Reeves again, Gary Trent Jr. again. These are players that, that we're talking about. We need to get one of these guys. We have to be players in free agency. We have money to mm -hmm. spend. We need to start spending. Um, so I'm, I would be for it. I know that there was a lot of people in the comments saying, you know, he's, he's unreliable. You know, he, re, he didn't show up in the finals, <clears throat> but he showed up in the playoffs, just wasn't the series. It wasn't the series that, that you know, mattered. Um, but, you know, it's it's low risk, high reward, man. If, if it's if it's really that contract size, 10, 10 million annually, you know, it sounds like it's um, it'd be a cheap sniper that I wouldn't mind adding. Exactly. And I think I'll, we'll find out a lot more about this in exactly two weeks. That's when free agency starts. But if you see a guy maybe like Gary Harris be, be let go, he, we have a team option on him. That tells you something's going to happen. That means the Magic already have committed, uh, have talked to a free agent that knows they're going to come here and replace Gary Harris. Um, so over the next week and a half, two weeks, we'll get that decision on what's going to happen with Gary Harris. And that will determine a lot of what's going to happen in free agency. So if we see a guy like Harris being let go, that means a guy like Gary Trent's already committed to coming to the Magic. Also, keep in mind, June 30th is when free agency opens up, supposedly 6 p.m. Reality is, our guys are talking right now with free agents. They, they know what's going to happen in a couple of weeks already. So that's what I'm saying. The draft is a big focus right now, but right after that, we turn the page into what are we doing? Who, what guys are we cutting? What guys are we actually bringing back next year? Because that will determine a lot of what this moves um, that we're expecting to make in free agency are going to be. Yeah, so some other things he mentions in his report <clears throat> is that the sources say Orlando will keep Markel Fultz, Gary, ha Gary Harris, and Bobo. So that was really nice to see because, you know, Gary Harris was a player that I was super shocked that he decided to stay with us for another contract. I really thought that he was going to go out, test the market, and, and kind of go with a more veteran team. So I really love everything that Gary Harris brings. Um, I know people were pretty hard on Bobo this past season. He showed some some glimpse, a small glimpse of some really good good aspects. I like the no, dynamic. Man. I like the dynamic that Bobo brings. I, you can you can talk about his defense. You can talk about you know all, all the different things that he doesn't do right. At the same time, he has these moments where it's kind of like, what the hell do you do to stop that? You know, he he has moments where he surprises you and. And whether he's 11, 12, 13 men on our bench, man, I, I, I'm i not mad at small contract 
that he's a player that has potential to play above you know the contract that we give him. So happy to see that. Now, the one thing I wasn't too happy about seeing is uh, where in his report, he also say that Magic are expected to make Cole Anthony and Chuma OKK available via trade. Um, so what are your thoughts on that, man? It's, is, is, do you feel like Cole Anthony is, is time to, to see it? Is there enough value for Cole Anthony and enough value for what we bring in this draft that you can see the magic moving on from Cole? I'll tell you what, I mean, if that does happen, that means that something in the exit interviews at the end of the season this year, Cole simply said, Hey, I'm not happy with this role. I would be, I would welcome a move because I want to be a starter. If that happened, maybe this is why this is happening. Otherwise, it makes no sense to me. Cole Anthony is, is loved by the fan base. He's embraced the city of Orlando. For me, one of the favorite players on the team when it comes to, to just what he brings to the table, the energy uh, on the bench, the way that he, he motivates guys on the locker room. So it would suck to see him leave. Um, but if that does happen, that means that he's unhappy with, with the role. And you can't have that when you're trying to build a winner. Um, understandable. I understand if that's his decision, that's what he wants to do. I personally don't think that he's proven enough to be a starter in this league and, and be basically saying, hey, I deserve to start over Markel Falls. I don't think he's done that consistently just yet to, to get there. Um, that's the only way I'll, I'll welcome this, this trade. But other than that, man, Cole Anthony, to me, is part of our culture, what we're building here. We, we can't. That, that's, that's the thing. Like, Markel Fultz, there, there is there is that risk there that can he can he stay healthy, right? Granted, past season outside of the the toe injury, he was fine, but can he stay healthy? And if he can't stay healthy, you know, I feel confident with Cole Anthony holding the fort down until he's able to make it back in. You know, if you don't do that, you're relying on that point guard responsibility to land on Jalen Suggs, and we we all know that you know we feel more comfortable him playing off the ball on that two guard spot, or whoever it is that you decide to draft in this draft. So you you trade away Cole Anthony, and now you're you're also kind of you know putting a void in a sense. I'm not I'm not ready to give up on on the Cole Anthony experience. It's part of the reason why I'm comfortable with the Magic not going after Fred Van Vliet. I think Cole Anthony you know, has a potential to be at that level or even surpass. And this is someone that it has crazy athleticism. He's a heart and soul of the Orlando Magic. He has that different dynamic that not every player is able to bring. <clears throat> he's the type of person that that brings everyone together. He's definitely a glue guy. And he's, in my opinion, a big part of what we're trying to do. You know, he's he's a young veteran like he's 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 playing. He's not the veteran guy just yet, but he's he's kind of there. Like he's tiptoeing that line, where he has a voice, he has a persona. Quite frankly, he has a game to 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 back it up. You know, last season was kind of like a seesaw season for him, where you know we saw moments that you know this is a Cole Anthony that that we've been waiting to show up, and then we saw moments where you know it's is is everything all right with Cole? Is he in a shooting slump? Like what's going on with him? Um, he's, he's able to bring a lot of really great value. And, and if there's one thing that I'm not wanting to see in any capacity is him no longer in a magic uniform because of all the great attributes that he's able to bring to this team. Chuma, on the other hand, like there's a lot of disappointment within this past season. If we had a part ways with Chuma, it is what it is. Um, but Cole Anthony, that one would, would hurt my soul a bit. The only way that would make sense too is it has to be a larger trade, right? Where you're with your involved in some sort of larger deal and call goals with some picks. That's the only way, man. I don't know what kind of value Cole Anthony would have at this moment that would get you back some sort of talent that um, would make a difference. So we'll see how that plays out, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Yep, yep. So let's uh, let's go over the updated mock drafts. We got the Athletic um, with the Magic selecting Asar Thompson and Grady Dick, the Ringer, Anthony Black and Derek Lively, uh, NBA Draft.net, Anthony Black and Jordan Hawkins, Bleacher Report, Anthony Black and Grady Dick, ESPN. I want to say I saw it earlier today. Did you see it by chance? Probably I did. It. I, I That's why I, I didn't put it there in, in our agenda, but I, I couldn't remember. So while you looked that up, Interesting that Anthony Black has become a common name at number six. And we're talking about point guards once again. So people keep linking Fred Van Fleet to us. Another linking Anthony Black to us. Another point guard. 
So is this related to the Cole Anthony news? Is that connected in any way? Because again, it doesn't make any sense to me. You got already a starter in, in Markel Fultz. Would Anthony Black replace Cole Anthony? Is that why people are making this, this pick? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I really hope this is not the way that the draft goes with number six. Because again, we talked about it last week at length. Not the pick that I would be making at number six. If- yeah, so ESPN has the Magic selecting Asara Thompson and Grady Dick at 11. Cool. So common names that we see, Anthony Black, Grady Dick, really no no major changes from last week's episode when we talked about um, the current mock drafts there. Um, and what they continue to say is that Anthony Black is just too too good to pass up. Um, they did say that his his draft starts at 6. Um, so if the highest that he'll go is six with the Orlando Magic, big guard, offensive, defensive, obviously shooting is a struggle. Shooting is something that, you know, um, isn't his his greatest skill. So that's that's part of the concerns from across the board from Orlando Magic fans and the fact that, you know, it's another point guard um, at the very least, man. That's that's why a lot of people are really high on the Thompson twins. Um, is the fact that there's athleticism there, uh, bigger wing can slide in that point guard, shooting guard spot. Um, and then you have a player like Grady Dick that, you know, they're, they're saying right now that his, his draft stock is a lot, a lot lower than what people automatically assume. They're, they're, he's still working out with teams a lot lower. He can get drafted mm-hmm. all the way down to, you know, the early 20s from what they're saying. So it, it kind of gives me it gives me a little hopes, man, that he actually might be available, you know, for the Magic at eleven. Um, so I'm I'm on board with not selecting Grady Dick at six anymore. Hold off, he's available at eleven. That's great. If not, you know, I've accepted the fact it is what it is. We have other you know snipers out there that the Magic could target. Yeah, another thing that we heard too is the Magic are supposedly interested in Nick Smith Jr., another point guard that uh, was highly rated. Uh, coming into this year's draft, but unfortunately didn't play that well. Fell off big time. But another big point guard, athletic, um, not a great shooter. So once again, it's all these guys that are being linked to the Magic that are simply big, can't quite shoot it well, but once again, they're point guards. Um, I don't think, again, nobody has a clue what the Magic are doing. The people kept calling the Magic uh, like a black box. You don't know what's going on. Last year taught us a lot. You had, you know, a lot of people just saying they're going with Smith. That's that's the pick. And we ended up going with Paolo. So I'm not believing any of this. But all I'm saying is it's kind of a scary trend. Like when you see this point guards being being assigned to the magic, I don't I don't understand it. Again, unless it's more to it that we don't know about just yet, doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, Brian Windhorst of ESPN says that the Portland Trailblazers, who has a third pick, Rockets, the fourth pick, Detroit, five, and the Mavericks, ten, are looking to trade out of their first-round picks in next week's NBA draft, which is kind of, yeah, you know, kind of surprised me a little bit. That that tells me that there's either a lot of interest in these draft picks, um, or it tells me that maybe they're not as impressed with some of the players that they see. Um, you know, in in that range that they're willing to trade for. Um, so, you know, if the Magic are looking to move up, the Magic will have the opportunity to do so. The question is, what is it going to cost to be able to do that? Um, mm-hmm. This is what I think that you know, it's it's between six and eleven. It's it's a really nice um, area to pick from because there's so there's a lot of really great players in in those spots, and I think that. Um, at the end of the day, when we when we talk about predictions, what we think will end up happening, and I, I want to get that from you um, in a few moments. Um, I think that missing on the first or the second or the third pick, you know, it it sucks because that would have been added value to where we don't have to worry about training up if we don't need to. Um, but at the same time, having those picks, man, it's 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 its own value in a sense that the Magic are either going to be able to trade those picks to consolidate and get the guy that you want um, or be able to add some nice quality talent to your team. But let's get your predictions. NBA draft next Thursday, June 22nd, Magic with a 6th and the 11th pick. Ultimately, what do the Magic end up doing? Who do they end up drafting? So my prediction if I was running the show, this is what I would do, depending, of course, who's available. But assuming this guy's available, I think the Magic will draft Cam Whitmore on number six. 
and they will draft. I'm torn on this one. Depends who's available to pick, but I think Grady Dick or Derek Lively is where they go. Uh, I'm torn. I really, really am. But I think if they draft a guard at six or a small forward, they won't draft Grady Dick. I think they will go for a backup center. I think there's a lot to like in Lively. The fact that he's athletic, shot blocker, he can shoot a little bit from three point range. You could say he's kind of like a Mo Bamba in the sense, like he's an athletic big guy that can shot block block shots and shoot it a little bit. And he's from Duke. Don't forget. So that connection of you know Wendell Carter um, and Lively kind of connecting in the center position, running that show for us, would make sense. Um, what I would want to see us do if if Grady Dick's projections are are better than we are, are hearing out there is you get him at six and you get lively at 11. You fix shooting, you fix shot blocking, get out of the draft. You're happy with that. Yeah. So the, the important thing to remember to know about everything that Al just said is that he's been completely wrong. Like the last three, se- <laughs> the last three seasons, like completely off. Uh, <laughs> so if, if you hear Cam Whitmore at six and you're like, what? Like, don't stress about it because <laughs> I've been wrong for, for, you know, quite some time. Um, I've had a better track record than Al. I'm not saying <laughs> that it's it's all that better. I at least got Paolo Bancaro right. But um, my prediction is that the Magic end up staying with their two picks. I think we end up staying with 6 and 11. I think that we do make phone calls and, and we'll start to hear some things later on. But I think ultimately the the Magic don't decide to, to do anything but stay put add talent and figure it out later. I think the magic end up going home with one of the Thompson twins. Um, I'm, I'm putting my chips on, you know, Asar Thompson, I'm falling to the magic. Um, and then I see between Grady Dick and Jordan Hawkins with that 11th pick. Um, I do like the legs um, and hear the legs that we're hearing from, you know, lively um, with that 11th pick. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the move either. Can you imagine adding another Duke player to this roster? Like you might as well just call the Magic, you know, the Michigan Blue Devils with how much you know Michigan and Duke players that we have. But you know, a a a, a big big player, um, obviously outside of Wembenyama, the best center in this draft, um, someone that came into you know the 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 college season ranked a lot higher than where he ended up being someone that could be an offensive lob threat, which is, you know, wouldn't be a bad addition. Um, you know, when you talk about Paulo Bancaro and, and Franz Wagner, if you add a player like a Sar Thompson, that's, that's a pretty good playmaker. Um, I, I think that that'd be a good addition. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. So um, if I'm a betting man, I would go Thompson and Grady because that's ultimately my outcome, what I want, but I wouldn't be surprised um, if it's, you know, maybe is aim maybe it's aiming like who who knows who knows yeah but i'll tell you what why one crazy prediction that i'll have that i know i'll be right about is the fact that this is our last year so enjoy this episode we have a few minutes left here enjoy it because it's our last episode last having one. to worry about the freaking lottery about the freaking draft it's over i i really believe it's our last year of, of having to worry about tanking and where are we in the standings so the rockets or pistons gonna pass us I don't care about that anymore. So I hope they just get it right, whatever they decide to do, that they can add value to the, what we already have in place in this roster and that we really are in the playoff chase next season. Because again, I'm so overdoing this every single offseason. I want to just focus on free agency, getting better, and this team making a run, hopefully playing basketball. Yeah, June 22nd. Next Thursday, it's right around the corner. We will be at the Magic Draft Party at the Amway Center. So, you know, if you if you see us out there, man, flag us down, say what's up. Um, and man, we're lo- we're looking forward to it. You know, it's it's a lot of questions that we need answers to, and we're going to find out very, very shortly. And then we got free agency starting June thirtieth, so it's going to be a very, very busy. Uh, next couple months because once we get these players in, now we're talking for about all the latest Magic news and updates. And we get visit kind of OrlandoMagicHQ.com and follow us on Instagram at OrlandoMagicHQ or basketball and on Twitter uh, in, in at OMagicHQ. Also, yes, remember to subscribe yeah, to our YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a five star review on your favorite listening platform.